Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Coaching Chats. Today we've got you know the big Julian with us, and we're going to talk a little bit about his favourite favourite topic, and that's arms training. Uh, we're going to cover a bit of you know the importance of arms training for your bro, like for your br- broness, and also the functional application of arm training. Um, we're going to talk. He's going to give his three top tips on how to give get bigger arms. And then he's at the end, he's going to drop in his favorite arm set and why it's his favorite. Okay, so Jules, how are you going, mate? Very good, very good. Always happy to talk about arms. Always how's that, happy to talk. About how's that elbow drain go? Uh, so they're, not, they're, they're going to try and not drain it, but it definitely is bursitis. Not looking great. Um, it might be an antibiotics job because it could be an infection of some other sort. So I'll keep you updated. Sick. <laughs> All right, man, let's jump straight into it. Arms. Why are arms important? Well, I mean, for bro reasons, they're important for it. Most important thing is the only thing you see when you see a, a brother walking in a shirt. But, um, you know, more than that, if you think of any sport that's like not soccer or sprinting, um, they usually always have a, a component of, you know, upper body dominance, whether it's Baseball, tennis, which are cricket, which are obvious ones, right? Where you know your arms are literally the thing that's that's holding um, holding whatever you know. Training, uh, I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean. And then um, the other reason is that the you know, the assistance muscle group to almost every like major core lift, whether it be a deadlift or a bench press or a pull up or a, a row, yeah. like you, what was that? Even your squats. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we, it's the most underrated thing I think about squat technique. Yeah. You say that a lot. Um, it's true. Yeah. Agreed. It's just, um, no matter how strong the muscle you're trying to target is right. If the assistance muscles that are trying to help are all like noodles that have no strength, um, you're just going to be handicapped from day one. You're never going to pull any big numbers or anything like that in the gym. And if you're an athlete, nor are you going to perform, you know, on the court or the field. Um, if, if your arms are just noodles that, that can't produce any force. What do you think? Uh, in terms of the functional components, uh, well, one of the best ways to get yourself better at pull-ups is do bicep curls, like fat grip bicep curls. Um, that's straight out of Joe DeFranco's mouth, I think. So um, he wouldn't uh, lie. No, no one's going to argue with what Big Joe says about pretty much anything, especially arms training. So um, let's like, for example, like, you know, pull-ups, they're essential. Your bench press, your triceps are a main part. We're talking a little bit beforehand about, I just did deadlifts and my triceps have got a bit of a pump on. Like just max effort work requires max effort from pretty much anything, especially when you're compound lifting. Like, for example, when you're doing your dead and you're going for that lockout, you've got, you've got tricep work there. They're, they're, at the end of the day, they are a component of external rotation in the shoulder joint and biceps are a component of internal rotation. Okay. So they are important in terms of shoulder health and going forward from there. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like any of those sports we named, right. Whether it's, you know, baseball, cricket, boxing, anything, um, it's, you'll be pretty hard pressed to find a sport that doesn't involve some sort of like flexion or extension at the elbow. Um, and trying to get force out of that movement. So. Even sports that don't look at it specifically, like obviously like I do a lot of swimming and swimming has a lot of bicep, bicep and tricep in, in all strokes. But if you look at stuff like rugby and footy, NFL, all those guys, they all have massive guns. Why? Because they need upper body arm strength to be able to get in contact, hold strong in contact, push people off, be physical, and also, bigger arms, you see a person walking down the street with massive arms, you think that person's jacked, right? Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. You are thinking that guy is jacked. So, if someone's walking out and they've got your opposite number walks out in front of you and they've got massive arms, you're thinking, holy shit, that guy's going to ragdoll me. <laughs> like, you've instant, it's a psychological advantage to having big arms. It's not just all pseudoscience b- bullshit. It's actually like a thing. Like... Nobody can lie and say, I've seen it. I have seen a dude with big arms walking down the street and I haven't gone, holy shit, that guy must lift. He must be strong. Unless they're like, you know, a you know, fat bastard out of like bloody Austin Powers. But like, <laughs> even that guy yeah. 
move more mass than anyone else. Like <laughs> mass moves mass, baby. Well, mass like moves. you know, in everything we do at the gym, we we always are preaching for um, like a well balanced, you know, well balanced uh, physique, well balanced, you know, ability to to produce force and all different parts of your body, right? So we we don't recommend anybody has huge upper body and, and chicken legs, and we don't recommend anybody has massive tree trunk legs and noodle arms and, and no pec strength or anything like that. So they're just another part of the body that, that we need to use to maximize like our output in the gym and stuff like that. So they need to be on par with the rest of our body and whether that's in size or strength or both, um, preferably both. Yeah. And I think there was a, big a, arms lot, strong arms. For a long time. There was like this big emphasis on posterior chain and posterior yeah. chain is essential and we're not yeah. disputing that. For a good reason. Yeah. But anterior chain is just as important in a lot of ways. Like there is a, like a lot of benefits in terms of injury reduction to having a strong anterior chain as, as strong as your posterior chain. Don't go out of your way and make like your, your posterior chain should be a focus point. It is very important and it should probably, you probably should be able to, you know, deadlift and squat. Well, squat can even be an anterior chain movement because it's a quad dominant, but like, you know, deadlift, you're probably deadlifting more than you're benching, yeah? Or you'd hope so. You know, like that, and that's, you know, also a lot of that comes down to the muscle groups itself. But you, the guy, like, who said, it, who said it the other day? Dylan said this the other day. The, the, the new work experience kid who's walking around Wembley at the moment, he said, posterior chain are your go muscles, anterior chain are your show muscles. Now, that is partly true and partly not true because anterior chain muscles have a very important role to play in injury reduction and performance, but make sure your posture chain is good. But also coming back to arms, make them big, baby. We've gone off top. We started talking too much about other things. Let's um, reel it back and let's go to your top tips for bigger arms. Top tips for bigger arms. All right. Stronger arms. It's not just a bigger arms. It's a strong arm. Strong. Good call. I'll give you three, give you three tips, okay? Number one, biggest and most important tip, angles, okay? So you might think that, you know, the, the, the bicep, for example, moves in two ways, right? Which is true, but it also moves in a bunch of other different ways and hitting it from the same angle every time is gonna give you the same results every time, just like everything else in the gym, okay? So it's the same as like anything else we do, whether technically, you know, a, a hinge pattern, right? We can hit a hinge pattern with, with three or four different lifts instead of just doing RDLs year round, 52 weeks a year. So it's just a, a change in stimulus. So number one tip is angles, all right? Whether it's bicep curls, um, you know, we, we don't have a massive cable machine at the gym, but you can do it with bands as well. Um, you can go, yes, there you go. You can do the old, all right, these ones. High bicep curls, okay? Good for your shoulder stability. And also it's just a different angle. You can go barbell curls, hammer curls, changing the angles again. You can go pronated, supinated, heaps of different stuff. So number one tip, change the angle. Can you do that again for me with your arms out straight? Everyone, watch his shoulders. This is a key part about what he's talking about with angles. They like biceps and triceps attach like through the shoulder. So they go like they're, this is they're so important for these reasons. They go through the shoulder. They go over two joints. So you need to change the angle in which you're doing your work in. Yep, agreed. Go to triceps too, guys. You can go overhead triceps. You can go kickbacks with your shoulder in a different position again. Pull downs with band, with rope, whatever it is. Close grip push ups, even um, all different stuff. Many different things. So number one, angles. Number two, this is the one that took me ages to learn. Um, it's not all about the pump. Okay, so a lot of guys <laughs> will chase the pump with myself included because the pump feels really good and your muscles start to swell up and stuff like that. But you need to actually have a plan of attack. So don't just go in there and start curling until you find a pump. Um, we still need to be working in our rep ranges that are giving us strength gains, hypertrophy gains, whatever your goal is at the time. Okay, and that leads into my third point, which is switch between volume and like high intensity with, with, uh, with weight. So switch up your intensity, either maximizing volume and going to high rep sets, 12, 15, 18, whatever it is. And then um, also make sure you're, you're, you're pumping weight and dropping the reps down, alternating, you know? So, so like we're pretty good with the programs we write. They usually have um, some sort of arm component, whether it's like tricep pull downs or whatever it is. 
Um, but they do tend to change between like heavier sets, um, you know, like five sets of five or whatever it is, or three sets of five, um, and then the high volume stuff. So mix up like the way you're training your arms as well. Don't just get stuck in a holding pattern. It all comes down to that, that always stim- changing. Yeah, exactly right. Like the stimulus needs to be forever changing or else the, you know, it's just going to um, really start to hinder how much progress you're making if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Yeah, man. Great tips. Great tips. Um, finish it off. Finish it off. Um, it might be a bit of a short one today. It might not be. I, I lose track of time. We're talking about arms, but um, favorite arm set and why? All right. My favorite arm set is a super set. Okay. The boys know this already. <laughs> it's good acting by you to ask and pretend you didn't know the answer that was coming because everybody knows my favorite arm set. Okay. My favorite arm exercise is bicep 21s supersetted with overhead tricep extensions. So bicep 21s, I'm gonna stand up for this. You ready? This pen is the barbell. You're gonna do seven reps from the bottom to halfway. All right, really focusing on the peak. Then you're gonna come up top, all right? You're gonna set your shoulders back, lock up nice and tight. And you're gonna go top down to halfway. No swinging up here. Seven reps there. And then you're going to do seven full range bicep curls. All right. So by the time fatigue sets in, that's when you start having to move with full range. You've got to keep your shoulders back. Stay nice and tight. If you start to collapse on yourself, it means you've got deficiencies elsewhere. Okay. Your arms will get tired, no doubt. But if your shoulders and your subscap muscles and stuff like that can't keep you locked in, um, you'll be exposed for a lack of real strength, pure strength. So bicep 21s, okay? Seven bottom half, seven top half, seven full range. Super set with overhead tricep extensions. Almost everyone at the gym has done these. I diamond grip the weights as heavy as I can go. Change between, um, like I said, volume and, and super heavy weight. Elbows come in a little bit, so you're not fucking out here. Oops, sorry. You're not out here and putting your shoulders in real funky positions. All right, isolate your triceps, full range, and then focus on the eccentric. Always muscle building stuff. Those tempos, Ryan writes, aren't for no reason. Am I right? Yeah, they're not. Read the tempos, boys and girls. Read the tempos. You do the oh, tempos. Tempo right. skippers. Don't skip your tempo. Don't overload your tempos. Do it properly. Train with intent. And with that, thank you, Jules. Um, very insightful. There's a lot of info there. There's a lot of. There's a few rants in there, actually. To be honest, yeah. a bit of everything yeah, in there. Cool. But that's, that's all we've got. That's our short snippet on arms today. Uh, big thanks to Jules for dropping on um, at short notice today because I forgot that I'd got to get three, seven days worth of work done in three days. So everything's a bit crazy down at my end at the moment. So Madness. everyone, thank you very much and we will catch you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for me. Oh, hang on, Jules, where can they find you? Oh, at Julian Ward 95 on Instagram. Um, at Julian Wood 95 on Twitter and you guys all know my Facebook it's on the, uh, I'm on the support group I'm always around there'll be reasons to find me very soon but that's a little teaser Oi. and you can find me <laughs> at um, Ryan at Ryan underscore FSC underscore coaching on Instagram Ryan Evenden coach Facebook and you sort these out so they're exactly the same and yeah, if right. you want to follow all things FSC go to Familiar Strength and Coaching on Instagram and on Facebook, I believe. Who knows? It's not my job. Anyway, goodbye.